Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me back here in Tierno, the last of you are playing as everyone's favorite, quite large man, Herman Goring, in which this isn't where we left off, and we're doing a different focus than where we left off on, but spare has gone, Hager still exists here down here, he's having his good old time, probably, you know, almost probably crying because he's going to lose the war, but Guns of the Patriots. Sounds like a video game title. Hmm. Allowing uh, involuntary workers to produce our uniforms, radios, trucks, and bandages is one thing, but allowing them to make our guns is, well, quite another. Thankfully, this war is bringing out the best in a number of our civilians who wish to play their part in the war effort, while also being unable to assert themselves by putting them to work in our munitions factories. We can proudly ensure a steady, reliable German-made gun in the hands of our boys. And you know what? We're going to do some equipment exploitation. This war is escalating more and more by the day, and our production is failing to keep up with our demands. To heck with the safety regulations and spare parts. We'll use every machine 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, until the machine crumbles into charred pieces. The war will surely be won over by that point anyway, so. Um, yeah, we got a lot of comments to go through, and I love reading your comments, especially regarding uh, <coughs> the thumbnail, but anyways. Uh, so far, the time is recording at, what was it, what was today, July 22nd, 2021? Um, not to monetize yet, but we're working on it apparently, so. Probably eventually someday. Unfortunate, but I love the spiciness of it. But anyways, a couple comments. Um, so I left this option on. Mad. So mutually assured destruction. Uh, destruction. Mutually assured destruction. A lot of you guys said keep it on, and some of you guys actually said disable it immediately because we don't want to deal with that. But one person's comment that I really liked said this: keep mad on, but I'm going to save consistently throughout this campaign and through these videos, just so that uh, you know, if something goes bad. I can go back and disable it if we really need to, especially when we go to war with America or uh, Japan or Burgundy or Burgundy. You know, uh, let this guy stop. That's fine with us for now. But yeah, Mad is going to be kind of frustrating for me probably. I'll give them about five more seconds before they, we kill them all because as you see, they're starting to die here, starve out for supplies. Attrition's only three percent. It's not very much, but oh no, Tricky Dick, no! Everyone loves Tricky Dick. Well, those that love him love him. Mr. Ebola man, no. Uh, and these guys are gonna die. And I'll show you the couches very, very soon, too, so. No worries about that. Oh, look at these guys. Oh, overrun. Yes, please. There you go. Effort. Very nice. Alright, boys, y'all know what to do. Head on in. Have a good time with Bowman's lackeys. Oh, and officer. Oh, yeah, we had officer assassinations, too, but whatever. Very good. At this point, I don't think they can do very much to us, so I want to capitulate. Hadrish last. I wonder if we just do a general attack here. Maybe not, because these, these guys still have tanks. So let's get our tanks down there first. We'll read at least one more focus. Pipeline production. The reality is that we do not have the awe-inspiring war industry of the Reich. Only portion of it. If we were to make the best use of it, we will need to streamline production. Until Germany is reunited once more, will we be able to cut down on the number of equipment variants and multitude of designs to ensure we can ensure a constant stream of supplies to the front? Which is going to be extremely necessary. Right now, we're still making civvies. Eventually, we're going to be making a lot of military factories. A lot. Actually, concentrate your forces on enemy tanks. I do not want them alive. I want them all literally dead. All right, so that's good. There, go, 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 go. The entire front, go. And you know what? Cut off all all of Borman's soldiers. Get down to the Italian borders, boy. Munich is ours. All right, very nice, very very nice. Munich captured, my friends. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Capital, of the birth of the movement, birth of a nation. What a great film, some might say. Uh, oh boy, I don't want to capitulate Hadrian too fast, but come on, baby. Get the bean, 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 bean. Where's my other helicopter? Go to bean, boy. Oh, they have so many divisions in there. Come on, I want to capitulate him later. God dang it, you bitches! Oh, we did. I did it. Hadrian is last. Hadrian is last. Ah, uh, this is for you, Hadrian, daddy. Ah, uh, dude, God has been captured. Jolly good. Jolly good. Actually, oh crap, I forgot to show you casualties. We've only lost seven thousand. We killed off two hundred thousand of them. I mean, Hadrian is not easy. It's definitely doable, though. Like, 100% doable. I've done it twice, but, like, it is not easy. Not sure if I can really recommend people doing it, but it, it's... It is. Mm -hmm. And also, staying at the war is actually maybe not a bad idea, so you can give your time more time to build yourself up, but, eh. Oh, so many are dead. Oh, there goes the SS. A third of a million have died, quite literally. Hey, look at that! We won! Oh, and also, just in case, I'm pretty sure he'll, he'll surrender to us, but you never know. You never know. Go in if you need to. Cool. And a military coup in Brazil. And, ah, Germania does surrender to Goring. A toast to our power. If we don't get a focus tree, then basically we just have to uh, remove anti hadrish Pact. Hello. Did we lose? 
Ooh! Now, welcome to Mr. Goring's Wild Ride. Please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Big thanks to the mod team. Thank you very much. Thank you, developers, who developed this mod. All the all the developers. Okay, so military's demands. When the final victory of uh, Fear Goring over the pathetic traitors that dared to defy his rule during the Civil War, the time has come for the Wehrmacht to once more venture out into the world and conquer it for the Thousand Year Reich. However, the militaries are a powerful and influential faction within the Wehrmacht, and they have their own designs on how the military might of Germany is to be used. The militarists will expect the new conquest of the right to be carried out promptly, and they will be most pleased when new lands are won for Germania through force of arms. But beware that if the militarists perceive the fear to be lacking the strength of will to carry out their plans to the fullest extent. Unexpected consequences maker. I am not doing hard mode, no way. I, well, I'm going to end the, the world in nuclear hellfire anyway, so. Naval games, anti war games, enter branch exercises would not be bad. We don't have the people for that. Ignore enemy aid advance. Okay, so War Cabinet. Sean is here. Liaison, Chief of the Operations. State of Cabinet. Um, hmm. Restore contact with Madagascar? We can draw that. Why not? Oh, the Militar Stat Madagascar. I said this last episode. He's just got the biggest forehead I've ever seen, except in Star Wars. Oh, boy. Look at all this stuff. We have... Zero, A, B, oh, good God. That's not going to be easy. Oh, support the Africa Shield. Oh, we can give them stuff, yeah. Actually, did they? They still exist? No, they still exist. They're not doing too bad. I might try to support them immediately, actually. It's only seven days. The South African war rages on seemingly unending, yet the right cannot afford to let the decadent forces of the West score such a large victory against our friends on the African continent. Aid is necessary, and while the ruins of the German Civil War are still smoldering, our generals are fired up and ready for the next conflict against the forces of Western capitalism. The most skilled of our German boards will be the first to step foot on the ground of African advisors and small divisions of soldiers will reinforce the lines of the colonies. To the public, this will be shown as an aid mission and news divisions, a news of divisions being sent into the heart of the darkness are be, to be suppressed as to avoid the volatile youth from having more reason to resist our rule. Just because I, I don't remember, uh, I want to see if we can actually do this up there. Deficit doesn't mean jack squat to us. Why are you, why was the AI building nuclear reactors while the civil war was going on? They really wanted to end the world, didn't they? Um, sure, whoever you are. Axel. Goodbye, Axel. The Waffen SS. Him and Goring, of course. One of the best divisions we have. Um, get those other motorized here, too. As well as. Yes, these boys. Good. It's quite a few divisions. Um, split you in half. That's fine. Alright, so let's get the fuel marshals. I apologize about doing this right now, but it's just better to do this now. Because I don't know who we're going to conquest first, so... Um... Leo. And... Adolf Heusinger. Alright, so free military factories, what do we... Oh, oh. What has the AI been doing? I'll be honest. Like, why are they so stupid? Why? So we've got guns. we got APCs. Okay, let's we'll start from the top. we got APCs, right? No. Okay, then. we got APCs now. We have APCs. Do we have rifles? Yes, we do have rifles, which we're going to need a lot of those. We've got some anti-tank, which is great. Do we have motorized? Yes, we do at the very top. Do we have support equipment? Yes, we do. It's artillery, we're going to need a lot of that. And anti-air, we might actually... I'm going to make anti-air for this campaign, because we probably are going to need it. There's no planes here. What the heck? Uh, Panzers, though. We technically already have these guys. That's all we really need for that. Um, Short-range ballistic missiles, medium-range, intercontinental. Get, we're going to need a lot of planes. Where we're headed, boys and girls, we're going to need a lot of planes. I'm... I want to use pair droppers. They might, or pair troopers. We might really, really want to make a division of them. Because to capitulate America, to land in Canada and Japan, we might need them. Ooh, but the range on the transport planes might not be very good. We could try it. We could try it. What is the range like? Range is 1,900 kilometers, while the average uh, fighter jet is what? 1900? Okay, 1900 is not too bad. If we want to take an example of that right now. Look at all these guys. Um, some of these guys are experienced. Uh, this is disgusting. I don't want to look at it. Um, I'd rather just redo them. Okay, so jet fighters, the basic jet fighters. The range is going to be a little bit lower. But that'll actually, that'll really help invade the UK. Because they still have a navy. It's not going to be very good, big, but... For that type of range... Um, I, I literally have my finger on my screen right now. You could come from continental Asia and paradrop probably into Japan somewhere. So, you know what? We'll try it. Screw it, we'll try it. Alright, boys, we're going to use up a lot of fuel in this campaign. Oh, man. Oh, man. Get those transport planes, or transport guys out. Oh, wait, air assault. Uh, okay. Anyways. Oh, look at all those extra fighters, or, no, dudes we got. There you go, let's 
fine, whatever. Apologies for this. Um, jet fighters, yes. Oh my goodness, I don't care that there's not big enough here. Oh uh, crap, where was it? Just get as much as you can. Free military factories, we're gonna need a lot of planes. So, um, there you go. Actually, we're gonna need a lot, so don't go 15. Uh, go with. Do we even have any carrier? Goring loyalists? No, we don't. That's a. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. We're gonna need a. Oh, do we even have naval bombers? These guys really suck. Holy crap. Well, they all suck. You're gonna be the leader of them for now. Uh, do that and train for now until you're, you're nice and dead. Uh, we got a lot of that. We're gonna get a lot of this. There is no naval bombers out there. Transport at least. Oh, do we have those? Oh, we don't. I want to make sure we use these guys because these are going to be super, 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 super important for destroying enemies. Max it out there. Um, interceptors. I don't use those. These guys are fine. We're going to we're going to make a lot of millies. Holy crap! Experimento. No, we could do that, but now we're okay. We could use these guys too. That's not too bad of an idea, but whatever. If we're going to use anything, we're going to use a lot of damage. Um, out of the class, is the top one. Bigger number, better, right? 1803, 1803, doesn't really matter to me. Uh, radar class, aircraft, oh, these are aircraft carriers. Oh, they're all aircraft carriers. Okay. Uh, bigger number, nope, nope. Basic carrier, nope, 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 nope. I do want this for open seas, so we're probably going to need at least one of these going. And then we're going to go with one of these guys. I'm not too worried about screens, but we'll get double up on the screen stuff too. Hindenburg tool, I apologize again for how long is it going to take. Oh my goodness, uh, battleships, 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 uh, basic battleship A, early battleship hold, no, no, basic cruisers, uh, are you a heavy or are you a light cruiser, that is a heavy cruiser, those are okay, eh, what is this one, this one is heavy than shore light on ship, a cruiser, what type of cruiser, it's still a heavy cruiser, I don't want a heavy cruiser, you guys are what, early cruiser, you're still no, you're probably still heavy, god dang it, multi class, there you go, that's not too bad, we'll take, we'll take you, and I'll we'll take some frigates or destroyers. I don't care which one of these two. Um, Rostock class frigates. Cool. That's fine with us. So that'll be okay. We have so much crap to work on, though. Oh, goodness. Oh, well. Do we not extract? Oh, uh, yeah. I need to let the game go on first. We need our factories back. And hard mode new. Thank you. Give us a day. See what happens. Or a few days, maybe. All right. So you guys are doing okay. We've got everyone here who needs to really be here. Um, you're really good, actually. Fritz. Thank you, Fritz. Von Stauffenberg. Oh, Shawna, you got level 6 attack. Jesus Christ, that's so good. Uh, Adaz, very good, very good. Do we get a time, like, a timeline of when people, like, want us to invade people? Ah, Thatcher. Alright, cool. Support the Africa Shield. Goring is victorious. Newspapers and TVs around the world broadcasted today. The Goring touring through Germania. Greeted by crowds cheering his victory, with a host vessel lead being played by his bands and various banners of Goring's forces flying from windows and buildings. Surrounded by armed youth and loyal hair soldiers, Goring delivered a fiery speech to the mass, a thousand proclaiming the dawn of a new Reich. In his oral manifesto, Goring promised a journey that would set the world afire once more for the glory of the German people, and threatened his enemies with swift destruction under the Reich's iron boot, all with the imposing crack of Volkshalle in the background setting the tone. The international response has been telling, with the mobilization of military Assets being announced by the United States and Japan, it seems that the three superpowers are beginning to prepare for what can they be seen as another world war looming in the distance. Finally, the Vaterland will be restored. Ah, I like his little cane though. Peace returns to Germany for now. Full scale intervention. Can I actually delay what happens here if we focus on Africa? Because we need more time to build ourselves up. I don't know, but hey, we'll discover it. Why not? Oh, we get some volunteers. Send aid to Hutig. That'd be kind of cool. Full scale intervention. It's high time we put our full effort into securing Africa. The divisions that we've sent thus far seem to be inadequate so far when it comes to winning the war. This incompetence of the African shield so far will, to win this war has proven a fact many of our generals have been saying since the Civil War started. The only total commitment will be able to win this war. Through it, our tanks will roll over the Great Plains savannas of the African soldiers as, of Africa as the brave boys stalk the jungles. The Americans will have no idea what they're facing. The full might of the Greater German Reich will be brought down like a hammer on the South Africans and their American allies. No longer shall we put up with their meddling. The first wave of divisions will be rapidly sent to the Dark Continent as more are prepared and prepped for the great battle. They shall be promised a celebration in Cape Town once this is all over. Oh boy, martial law is not bad. Between Behemoth and Leviathan, Johannes Steinhoff entered the office through the drum of soft fleshed on wood. It was a fear, of course, his thick fingers relentlessly bouncing against the surface of the table over and over in erratic rhythm. The veteran pilot noticed that each digit was crowned with at least one jeweled ring. The value of the man's hands must have been worth more than an ME262. Uh, the 262. 
Thinking about the jet had been a mistake. He felt himself once again in the cockpit. The sickening drop, the blinding flash, then the fire, the awful flames that he could even feel now. It took a supreme effort to regain his bearings. That was the past, he reminded himself. That was a past, and this is a present that must be focused on. If the corpuscular despot noticed the inner monologue, he didn't announce it. Instead, he gestured to a chair. Once the ace had seated himself comfortably, he plunged into the question that had been hanging above them this whole time. Mind fear. While I deeply appreciate the trust you seem to place in me, I am still unsure as to why you want me specifically to lead your Lutfafa. To his surprise, a few are going smart. Ah, straight down to business, eh? I like that in a subordinate, you know. Always good to get right to the important parts and leave small talk for later. Yes, that's just what I require. He began to say something else, but stopped himself, looking to Steinhoff as he might be nervous about something. The truth is, General Steinhoff... He goes quieter now. Almost conspiratorial. The truth is that I need someone who isn't beholden to either the butcher or the pissant by my side. Shona and Spider, the realization dawned on Johannes. The Fuhrer was apparently not fond of his top officers, it seemed. It will be a tall task, no doubt, but I offer to spare no expense for my Luftwaffe, you understand. Anything you want. You'll have no questions asked. Nominally, of course, you'll have to report to General Feldmarshal Shona at the OKW, really. You'll be able... Uh, You'll be answerable to me and me alone. Just send him some paperwork every now and then and again, and I'll keep him off of you. So, what do you say? I suppose they don't have much of a choice, but the Ascension, my friends. Traces of smoke stilling about Germania. The day of Goring's Ascension. Blown in by the winds, coming off the North Sea and over the burnt remnants of thousands of homes, vehicles, flesh, or fields, and everything else that could catch fire. It did not deter the thousands of Germanians who flocked to the streets to see a new daddy. The parade was endless. Thousands of soldiers proudly marching throughout the streets, trucks upon trucks streaming through the roads, followed by hundreds of tanks. Finally, in a Mercedes convertible surrounded by soldiers of all sorts of units, my friend, oh, the Fuhrer, rode his chariot towards the coronation. Flowers dumped on the men, thrown from windows as the greatest city on earth welcomed its new conqueror. At the steps of the Volkshalle, Hermann stepped from his car to the roar of the crowd. As he walked up towards the building, he stopped, turning to the parade, and waved his hand. All it took for the streets to explode with frenzied cheering. There was no doubt now. Germany would be strong again, and the whole world would know it. A new era beckons. The pencil-pushing admiral. So what do you think, Admiral Putkammer? The Fuhrer studied the face of his guest, looking for a hint of the demanded decision. As usual, Putkammer kept his poker face. Or maybe it was just indifference, and their ears together, the old Reichsmarschal had never been able to pass out how much of the inscrutability Adolf's old adjunct exude as a matter of personal policy or as a simple disinterest. He briefly wondered if he had been born a similar expression in those days when he had taken to the morphine needle. No, 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 he decided. After a little thought, even the worst of his stupor, he had always decided and always had the flame of ambition, and he will do to carry it forward. Karl Jesko von Putkammer was nothing like him. So why was he giving such a man the reins of the Kriegsmarine? Rather, what was left of the Kriegsmarine following the defections and the blow of Dennis's mutiny, anyhow. Goran could have given a dozen of public ready answers at that moment. The man had served Adolf impeccably. He had long, a long and distinguished career. On and on. The truth, however, was far simpler. The man had no ambition whatsoever. Even the humblest of clerks in the Reich's government knew that the new fear was, to put it politely, not very interested in the functioning of the Navy. That meant it was best left to someone else to manage, and a better a man with little desire to abuse his authority than one hungry for more power, never in the Donuts. That was Goring's single criteria when he began his search, and it was the criteria he followed when he landed on Mr. Herr Putkama. I just want to remind you, the very heavy set dictator said softly, noticing the lack of response to the ultimate question, that I do not intend to bother you on your duties, nor will General Shona be given free reign either. You'll report to him, but that doesn't mean he has any more desire to manage your affairs than I do, frankly. I'll consider it a great favor for you to remove the Navy from all this factional bickering once and for all. Putkammer nodded slowly, almost thoughtfully. That was all Goring needed, in acceptance whether Putkammer had realized it or not. With a few thanks, he escorted his new Gross Admiral to the door. For his part, Putkammer put up no resistance, seemingly consigned to his new role. Good, Goring thought as he closed the door to his office. He hated when things were made difficult. Who even needs donuts? Mm, we don't. Scum. Alright, so we got 5 army XP. That's not good, man. Oh god, what did the AI create here? Uh, that's not bad. Template one's not bad. Oh, I prefer eighteen though. Okay, just give it that then. Or oh, just division infantry division. These guys are not bad either. That's actually pretty good. Waffen SS is not bad. We already had that somewhere else. Falsham Jäger, not bad. Oh, there's so much. Oh my gosh, we need so much army XP. Um, honestly, like these guys are not bad. Infantry division two is pretty good. I'm just looking for what we can convert to convert our divisions to. Division everyone become infantry division two. Are you guys all the same thing already? Pretty much. 
Oh, well, uh, I got rid of the Mountaineer. My bad. Uh, convert one of them back. There you go. Go back. Go back. Go back. Um, we have way too many different types of things here. So you guys are... Screw it. I'm just going to look at this one. Uh, motorized are fine. I can, I can I can deal with motorized. Military police we can do for other stuff. Waffen SS2 is okay, but uh, honestly, if we're going to use motorized, I want it pure motorized like this one. Like, Motorized Infantry Division. That would be good to use. This one down here is also not bad. It's probably just Division 2. What? Is it? Infantry Division 2. Let's go with 2. So all of you guys, we're going to save tanks doing this too, so. Because I want speed, 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 speed for these guys. Buff and SS? No, 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 no. There you go. Because this is this is just too many. I don't like seeing this many divisions here. I, I just can't deal with all this stuff. Um, light infantry, how are you looking at? Uh, oh, actually you're 10. You guys are 8. That's actually a little better. I like this one more. Light infantry template 1, so we don't have to deal with it as much. Um, thank you. Liquid police force, we don't believe in that right now. Do that, thank you. That is fine with us, Denmark. Hmm. Get out of there. I'll deal with this a little bit more off screen. So let's keep moving up. Oh, there goes President Kennedy. Goodbye. Oh, it's lagging super hard. I can't even do anything with heck. There we go. Let's go four for now. Because I'm going to make these guys 40 combat with as fast as possible. Ah, go six. Why not? Uh, Panzer divisions. That's actually not too bad. Let's train two. And I do want to get at least one false stream you get going here. So that's fine with us. Marines. We've got some Marines here. Do get another objective here. Interbranch exercise would not be bad. Air war games. No, that's all fine. Anything else? No, cool. And spend. Spend more. Spend, spend, spend. And just... Can we finish this one up? For the love of God. Why are we building that? The Lonely Island. Oh. Mm, there you go. That's fine. You know what? We're so close. We might as well just finish it off, right? Fear Goring was deep in concentration, using a magnifying glass to inspect every inch of his custom-made diamond-encrusted baton for any hint of blemish or disfiguration. He found such an act not only soothing, but a blessed relief from the daily grind of handling reports and signing forms. When Adolf was alive, he had envied the position of the leader of all the Reich, but now that he had it? Well, he certainly didn't begrudge the authority, but he was not a fan of all the work. The lisping voice of a man brought him out of his task. It was Steinhoff. Anyone else in Goring would have thrown him out, but... If the head of the Luftwaffe wanted a meeting, then who? Then he could overlook the interruption. Hermann gave one more look over the baton before addressing the awaiting general. Yes, Herr Steinhoff? What brings you to my office this fine day? Does the Luftwaffe need more funding again? I told you, you don't need to come to me for anything else. All you have to do is take what you want. Do what you want, man, come on. Steinhoff shook his head and pushed his sunglasses back up to fully covering his eyes. Uh, no, uh, <clears throat> my fear. It's a matter of foreign affairs, actually. Herr Axman uh, agreed that you would probably want to know that we've re-established contact with Field Marshal Milch in Madagascar. That got Goring's attention. Hmm, I see. Thank you, General. This was indeed worthy of my attention. Please, relay my wishes to Rex Minister Axman. For a an invitation into the pack to Milch. It's just one poor island. We have bigger fish to fry. Go on back. Milkman. Give us your forehead. Oh, uh, ah. Rally against the beasts. In the ruins of Germany's cities, the chance of the opposition and of the youth roared as loud as guns and bombs once did during the Civil War. And from the universities and schools, what remained of the student movement emerged with a renewed defiance against the victorious line, the promised fear of a new father to learn. It was a surprise to see them so alive. Nobody really thought they would keep on with their passionate stand against the militarist forces of Goring, and yet, here they are. Their numbers grew when the protests spread. Soldiers and policemen rushed to meet them to keep them from accomplishing what they hoped for. Some succeeded, but others were not. For every demonstration they crushed with the club or rifle, there are two more which crushed them back with a petrol bomb or rock. Just like the embers of a dying flyer made fresh again with air and fuel, so were the students who stole weapons from the dead or fleeing security forces. Just like the rising form of a phoenix, the students filled with rage that only becomes uh, as a second wind, denounced the victors and threatened their the returning peace. This all shook up the German people once more. They watched from their broken windows or from their dirty places, workplaces, as these young men and women tried to fight again for what they stood for. Most of them wanted peace for this to finally come to an end, even if Goring was the one victorious and not spare Hedrich or Bormann. Do they really think Bormann or Hedrich would be really even better for them? Give it up already, some would sell it to students. The war is over. What's left for you to fight for? In response, there was only contemptuous silence or a barrage of proclamations or rebellious that defied what was already set in stone. Yet the students would keep on marching, protesting, fighting back. Even if it meant their death or fate much worse, they didn't seem to have any other choice. To capitulate was anathema to them. To not dissent was far more outrageous than it was than it is to stand up to what's happened, even in defeat. They're just wasting their energy. You get student protests, huh? Well, we're not going to touch that one then. Send reinforcements. Um, what? Send armor. To my old friend. Um, maybe we'll send some reinforcements first. Ah, oh, we need that manpower, though. We can always make more guns here. Oh, that's 150, though. Eh, that's some of that stuff. 
And then invite him into the path. Let's get this one done and we'll invite him in. The hard sell. A dim sense of blanket at Jumani as Hans Spada walked into the Fuhrer's office. As eyes darted left and right, looking for any possible assailants as the Fuhrer's secretary walked out. He heard a knocking noise, looking over to see him and Goring tapping on his desk. <clears throat> Are you all right, Hans? Hovind Goring said in a concerned tone. Yes, my Führer, Hans said meekly as he took the seat. I assume that you would like to know if, why I invited you here tonight, General, Hermann said, bending his head forward. General Spado's heart began to pound uncontrollably as his right hand began to tremble. Well, it might have something to do with my actions during the Civil War, he tr said, trying to prolong the inevitable. Indeed, Herr Spado, indeed, Hermann nodded. <clears throat> I assume you're, or you're displeased about how I failed to support you at the time, is that it? Hans stumbled. On the contrary, Herman Goring bellowed as his face lit up. I called you here to offer you a promotion. The Reich needs a new Oberkommandant, des Heers. You are my first choice, considering Schoner was my only other option. Hans Sparrow's mouth hung slightly agape, looking absolutely bewildered. He struggled to contain both his joy and confusion. Hans, uh, that's wonderful, mein Führer, he yelled. I accept this offer with honor and dignity, but why did you bestow it upon me? Why did I bestow it upon you, Herman laughed? Who else would I have chosen? You stood in the middle of the Civil War, faithful to the Reich alone. It is one thing to support me, but you went beyond that. You got to Berlin with the loyalty that should be expected of a general, he continued. I see you have not misplaced your trust in me, mein Führer, he said giddily. Actually, uh, ten days? Um, I don't want to touch this one yet because we need that political power to do this for now, but the Bush War begins. Field Marshal Spider's love for Africa, leaving Shono almost total... Uh, having total control over the Wehrmacht in Germany. Spado's absence has provided Schorner an ample opportunity to extend his influence throughout the Wehrmacht. Already he has begun courting key officers within the army, hoping to grow the power of the militarist faction, but no matter Schorner's efforts, all is dependent on Spado's performance in the South African War. Spado returning home as a hero or disgrace will determine Schorner's success or failure and the growth of his clique. Nice. Nice, that's what I was waiting for. Let's get down to nine days, a proposal at Khan Hall. And, boom, okay, cool. So now we'll do this, we'll send it out, That'll be fine. We'll see what he says. Now, ooh, we can do an unlikely alliance begins. We're not touching that one. And German invention, intervention in Africa. The Reich returns. A proposal. A gas spot had delivered a meal as splendid as always. A Führer made a mental note to reward Karin's resident chief, or chef. Maybe he would even give the slaves who assisted him a day or two off. He was feeling magnanimous after such a lovely dinner, but enjoying his meal, even an excellent woman, was not the purpose of the night. No, no, no. The purpose was that the two men who flanked Goring on either side of the table, on his right side, Albert Ballman, the loyal brother, and to his left was she did his nephew, Heinz Theodore. The pair also seemed to be savoring the experience. Uncle, the roast beef is quite exquisite. I've never had it served so well before. Your cook will have to give mine the recipe one of these days. Goring smiled. Thank you, Theodore, but the food can be discussed later, I think. Right now. I need to ask both of you, he motioned for Albert to join the conversation, to prove your loyalty to me. Albert was always trying to make up for his familial shame, was predictably quick to respond. Of course, my fear, whatever it is you need, we will provide it. I swear we are both your devoted servants. Theodore lamed, lamely nodded along, never one for having such or much in the way of independent thought. That would actually help in this case, however. My friends, the Reich is at a crossroads. We may have triumphed in the Civil War, but I must contend with the Wehrmacht. They believe I owe my position to the efforts alone. Knowing that tenacious dude, Shorno, they will never let me forgive it. Or forget it. That's where you two come in. I need men I can absolutely trust within the High Command. Men willing to keep me updated on everything the generals do, gentlemen. Can I count on your service? There can only be one answer to the fear. Yes. 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 Ooh, we can send any to Shank. That is not bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the Great Purge, though. Where there was once a vicious discutant of gunshots and explosions, a dull silence now fills the void. The screams have faded, the dust has settled, and the taste of blood and smoke lingers in the air like a distant memory. But the final body has not yet fallen. Victory everlasting is sweet to the tongue, and there, but there are still toxic elements that threaten to spoil the flavor. Littered throughout the Reich like an infestation of rats, hide most of our craven foes, those who foolishly believe that the end of the Burger Creek heralds their safety. They are wrong. From the liberal scum who blindly followed the lives of Speer to the Bormanite weasels who protected the corrupt status quo, our great purge will spare no traitor. With great aid from the Reich Marshal Field Schorner, a Ferdinand Schorner, and the Wehrmacht, Goring's triumph shall be maintained for years to come. King of the Abwehr, as he stood it into Mr. Goring's office, Reinhard Galen noticed that Fjord seemed somewhat nervous. It was a rare state to see him in, and Galen wondered what had occurred and to induce it. He would have had his men look into it before he could further ponder it, however, the big daddy addressed him. Hey, Galen, welcome. Welcome, I trust you mean to accept my offer. The Abwehr is in need of a new chief soon, and if you do not intend to take the position, I will need to begin searching for a suitable alternative immediately. There's no need for that, Galen responded curtly. I intend to take the position, of course. He noticed the Fuhrer's eyes wandering towards the door, so he glanced over his shoulder. There was no one there. His attention turned back to Goring, who had begun to focus rather intently on Galen instead. However, if I may ask, is there a reason this promotion wasn't offered to me by Feldmarshal Shona? The Albert is within his purview, is it not? 
The fat man looked as if Galen had slapped him. I am the gosh darn effin' Fuhrer, and I appoint who I please. His voice was a quiet hiss, as if he did not want any outburst to be overheard. The Fuhrer glanced at the door once again before continuing more calmly. Shona may cut your checks and take credit for your work, but as long as I am your daddy, you report to me first. Is that understood? Goring's eyes bowled into the spy master, a mix of domineering and desperate or desperation. Galen, suddenly having gained a much clearer understanding of what was occurring, quickly nodded. Yes, mein Führer. But welcome back, and of course, you'll be able to stay in the Reich for as much time as you need to recuperate. I wasn't joking about the Karin Hall invitation, you know. Uh, Hermann was walking through the Reichskanzlei with Milch, introducing him to everyone worth knowing in the regime. His old friend has been quite has been quiet for most of the tour, only giving the courtesy required greetings, but nothing more. He decided and looked quite tired and frankly malnourished. Although Goring had decided not to bring it up for politeness' sake, the re-establishment of the Reich's Commissar at Madagascar had not gone entirely as smoothly as he hoped. To be honest, the <clears throat> 16th Army Corps had been dispatched to relieve the skeleton garrison and had immediately been set upon by rebel bands still active across the island. At least, with the island's airfields retaken, they could launch air raids against known hideouts. Still, but still, it was shaping up to be quite a long and difficult slog. Milch clearly had needed some time to rest, and so Goring had relieved him of his duties and placed him, his second-in-command, Werner Goldberg, in charge for the time being uh, officially, though. It was only going to be a temporary vacation, but seeing Milch in person made Goring doubt that the man would ever willingly return to the island. Ah, well, well that was a hassle for another day. It feels good to be back home. Ah, ah, yes. Milch, Milch, welcome back. Also, we did send divisions to, uh... We can only send divisions, for some reason, to Zentra Africa. I guess we don't really... Oh, no, we can send divisions now. Really, we couldn't. We can send divisions to all of them. But I sent the two uh, helicopter divisions down here, so they should do pretty darn well. Um, as, and they should be down there lickety-split. Right now, we're still doing the Great Purge, which should be a great deal of fun. But martial law afterwards, because... Ooh, we're going to lose a lot of political power. But that's okay. Anarchy has reigned in the streets of Germany for too long. Now that we've eliminated all pretenders to the title of Europe, we can assert our authority by restoring order. Martial law shall be instated, with the Wehrmacht adopting policy, policing units and, and roles until the situation returns to normals, or normalcy. Few will want to cause trouble when the rumble of a Panzer X is just around the corner. Of the Great Purge, the Great Lion, and the Colossal Wolf have been won. The most powerful enemies lie dead, their blood soaking into the earth of Germany, leaving to their mercy the countless young and foolish students who dare to stand up to them, and the dissidents who roused them to action, and the bankers who funded them all, they and everyone else who, in vain, stood or seeks to stand in the way, would all be liquidated. By the will of the victorious Führer, him and Wilhelm Goring, and his most exorable Lieutenant Ferdinand Schorner, the fates of all those who fail to stand against them shall be equal, if not worse, than those exterminated in the wars before. Great numbers of students were rounded up and forced into camps to be brutally disciplined according to the standards of the Wehrmacht. No matter who they are, where they came from, and what they believed, all of them would shall not be spared the rod. On pain of death they will obey. As for those who sought to disturb the political happiness of the Vaterland, they will be hunted down and arrested without fail. Be they brave Souls who proclaim socialism, democracy, reformism, or the like, their virtues shall be stomped upon by the boots of those who value the law of the land, so that they may not disturb the peace once more. Their lives shall be spent behind bars, else they find themselves buried in a vast, unmocked grave. And finally, the parasites who deceive the people to steal the money shall be neutralized. The greed will not deliver them from the accounting which the Fuhrer seeks to employ, and the wretched hands shall not touch another coin or bill. No, they will, like all the others, be made to bear their necks to the claws of the lion and the jaws of the wolf, no wasting mercy on the scum of the earth. I got into that one a little bit too much, but on the shield, uh, we could probably do that one, but it's only uh, tech helicopters on bet. I'm the group Africa. I kind of like that one. That seems pretty nice. As the troops are ready and sent to the great continent of Africa, the organization of special African divisions will be created. These units will be specially trained to fight and survive in the harsh climates of Africa, and just like Rommel's Africa, Kuor before him, will be elite and highly skilled. In addition, the current forces of the Africa Shield need to be centralized with our African or African divisions. They are, after all, our colonies. This will be done to ensure a strong, unified force that will be able to crush the American forces and secure Africa. Now, why am I doing this? Just be I just want to see how far we go with Africa. If we get... I don't know, I just want to see them collapse eventually, but I don't know. I just want to help them out as much as possible for now. Just because we can. I'm sure someone's going to ask that. Why are you helping out the, uh, your colonies in Africa? Because we want you to take them out. I'm like, I don't know, because we can. See what happens. I, I literally have no idea what's going to happen, so. Uh, besides, if anything goes bad, like, I'll fix things off, off, off screen. But I didn't get through a lot of the comments. Apparently someone said there's two endings. Someone says we should do two. Remove the militaries after plan B, and do the other path with do war plan C and finish world conquest, basically. So we'll do the best we can. No guarantees, but we'll do absolutely the best we can. And the first of the couple of helicopters are coming down. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, they're already there. 
But they're already there. <gasps> We're out. It feels like a reverse America right now. Ah, you want to escape, you South African division? Ah, Marshal Law declared. The line of a man sighed, and tired grin appeared on his old face. He walked down the empty and fairly lit hall, the one on the late Hitler walked down himself with his fellow victor, Field Marshal Shona by his side. They paused short of the doors that kept them out of the office from where the father of the Great Reich once worked. Leading the German people, the successor turned Field Marshal. I have immense confidence in your abilities. I'd like to ask you a significant favor for our victory. Take care of the cleanup. Keep your head or hand in the details of the martial law we've just declared. I think you can do that by... Yes, my fear. Shona quickly interrupted with a nod. And those students and their arrogant allies in the banks, along with those dissident dudes from the camps, will be dealt with strongly. I'll personally see to it. The football pilot with grizzled hair blinked at him. Then he chuckled, shrugged, and said, huh, uh, Really? Well then, I'll give you the liberty of doing what must be done. Just don't take too long, all right? Of course not, Shona thought. His new fear was a little too histronic. Well, not a big deal. It's natural for a flyboy like him to play with an army officer's for favors. I'll see to the... Just make sure that nobody breaks the curfews and pisses us off with any tricks. The sooner these pests and their supporters are taken care of, the sooner our country can lick its wounds and get to work, the Fuhrer said all too quickly. The field marshal looked up and then he gave a nod. Shona saluted him. He turned away and marched off, goring, watching him disappear. The old great line who won the war for Germany's conquest to be added to it now twisted the knob of the door and stepped in. The door closed, and the ruthless wolf who fought that war for him so he may spill the blood of even more of the Vaterland's enemies looked back and whispering, I'll cauterize the wounds of Germany. Nice. Spidel in Africa. Wow. Wow. More recovery rate. Just planning speed and max planning. That's not like the best if we can get, but that's not bad. Spidel, it's a nuisance here in Germany, constantly undermining our plans for a greater Germany. One is shackled by the pacifism and bloat of the 50s German Reich, however. He was also a very skilled general in his acts in the Second Great War and the West Russian War proved this to be the case, so why not kill two birds with one stone? Spidel can be sent to Africa and will oversee the forces of our Africa Corps and hopefully pull off a decisive victory and this will get him back off our backs as domestically we continue to transform Germany into the image of glory and war. Ah, oh, hopefully. We're here to help our allies, our colonies, my friends. Like, our colonies. Oh, someone just got overran. Well, why'd you do that, guys? Why'd you get overran? That's not smart. That's not smart. That's just really not smart, guys. But it's in some planes down here, too, so not to worry. We do have planes. Hopefully. Um, where are these guys at? Hello. Yellow? Um, ah, they're over here. Okay. Well, these aren't all the planes I did send. Oh, I did send helicopters, too, so. Well, um, air assault. Yeah, oh, they're still making... Oh, yeah, they're taking their sweet booty time. That makes sense, then. Ah, very good. They're struggling down here just a little bit, but that's all right. Now we should do okay, my friends. Now we should do okay. Pratt elected in Chile. Ah, uh, Riefenstahl's triumphant return to filmmaking. Lenny Riefenstahl, one of the most skilled and famous filmmakers. Famous filmmakers. Known for movies like Triumph of Will and The Victory of the Faith, is once again to be called up for the work at this time in Africa. The populace is still wary over the calamity brought by the German Civil War and faith in the Germans' ability to win the South African Wars at an all-time low among their populace. Thus, we need something to whip our populace into patriotic, and what better way to do that than with the art of film? Riefenstahl will be sent to Africa to film the beauty of this continent, the vast jungles and rolling savannas. Any German will be lucky to see this beauty. Luckily, any young man can, and as long as he signs up to join the Africa Corps, German soldiers will be shown off smiling and well-fed, the uniforms a symbol of glory and honor. The proud sons of the Reich will be shown off to the world, and Germany's glory will shine eternally through our films, my friends. Oh, look at that. It's not bad. Against USAF. Goring is a veteran of Luftwaffe. He has, he has flown about the trenches of France in the First World War, and has led the Luftwaffe to victory in numerous battles during the Second World War. So if anyone understands the importance of war in the air, it's Goring. In Africa, the skies are a battle. The soaring jets and thundering of anti-aircraft guns are all that is heard by the soldiers as they march south. Smoke and fire constantly rain down and butcher our divisions. This needs to end. We must turn the battle in the sky around and make the Americans fear the power of the Luftwaffe once more. Planes and pilots will be sent en masse to Sudwest Africa. They should hopefully be able to cr deal crushing blows to the U.S. Air Force from the bases in Sudwest Africa. Very good. And that, of course, will be next. Our GDP is really bad compared to our debt. But debt is but a number, as many people try to tell me, and I don't like to listen. Mm. Oh, hello. Yeah, give him some re- Oh. We won! Peace at last, my friends. We've done it. Well, at least we got- Riefenstahl. Riefenstahl out of retirement. 
After 20 years of retirement, the famous director Lenny Riefenstahl has announced the creation of her latest film, The Last Domino. Known for iconic propaganda films in, of early party rallies, The Last Domino focuses on the current conflict in South Africa. Having spent several months with a Wehrmacht unit in the bush, Riefenstahl's endless footage of firefights and airstrikes have been an instant box office success in Germany, with critics praising Riefenstahl for her illustrious return to cinema. The release of the film has also had a substantial morale boost on the troops at the front, though progress may be slow. Any kind of encouragement is helpful. An instant classic. That's a really strong 15% more war sports. Really nice. Oh, if I'm humiliated. Look at this. Um, okay, so the Boer Republic becomes independent. And they join Einheit's back. Yes. This seems kind of cool. One day. Once again, German arms have carried the day against the decadent capitalists and the Judeo-Bolshevik overlords. The South Africans and their patrons in the warfare believe that in the wake of the civil disturbances taking place in the Vaterland that they had finally found the chance to assault our settlements in Africa. What did they not account for was the personal ingenuity and courage of our local Reichskommissars. The names Siegfried Müller, Hans Hüttig, and Wolfgang Schenk will forever live on in the annals of the Thousand Year Reich. As the embodiment of what it is and means to be a true Aryan and warrior, the anguish in Washington can almost be felt here in Germania, but such is the price of their own failure, our righteousness, and their cowardice has been proven in blood and fire as in the old days. Darn, we, we, we were just barely there and we won. Time for a break. Goring sat at his desk and a stack of unexamined papers reports a memorandum regarding the recently won South African war sitting to his side. The fear of the German Reich was, in a word, bored. He desperately searched for something, something interesting to do. His mind racing from idea to idea was settling on any single one for very long. Inspect the tanks again? No, no, no. He had done that too many times since the Civil War had ended and was getting stale. Head of the opera? He liked that one, but Shona would be too furious to make it worth it. Design a new wing for Karen Hall? Now that sounded enjoyable, but what if... He sprang from his seat in a flash of inspiration and snatched up one of the many phones for the numerous important connections he had to call on a daily basis. This particular phone was marked OKW Headquarters. Yes, this is Sierra Going. Yes, yes, Seagull. Is, is Rommel still there? Good, good, good. Put him on quick. Quiet blanketed the room for a few moments and minutes while the heavyset dictator waited with barely contained excitement. Then a new voice came through the other end of the phone, or the line. Mind you, Rommel's voice was still professional as ever, even in retirement. How can I be of assistance to you? Goring's face pulled into almost impish grin. Hey, Rommel! Pack your things! I'm going on a tour of our African lands and I want you to join me. I I suppose I couldn't refuse such a request from Mind Fear now, could I? Goring's mask of geniality collapsed for a moment. No, you absolutely could not, Erwin. How foolish of me, my Fear. Please forgive me. What? Oh, we're going to Africa! Support the Boers. You know what? First, I, I want to help them out. I'm sorry, like, I know we just finished a war here. But, increase the loyalty, decrease increase the influence. De oh. I want to see what happens in here. Oh, yes. Let's finish this out. F support the Boers. The Boer people have proven themselves capable and worthy allies during the war in South Africa. They were quick to realize that their British overlords were only puppets of Jews and commies, and their own Germanic stock being naturally rebelled to such degeneracy let in them the fire of independence. As a reward for the service, we have opted to give to them the land of their former oppressors in the Cape along with their own ancestral land. As for the good token of goodwill, the Führers personally signed off on the deployment of two divisions of good German soldiers to garrison these regions against native and South African terrorists, looking to trouble their new masters to a long and happy friendship with the Boers. What's not to love? And first among equals in Africa. While our friends of the Boers and their sons in the Rex Commissariat may have shouldered the brunt of battle, it's important for them to remember that they would not be in a position to even be in Africa, were it not for the far-sighted policies of the Vaterland that established a colonial outpost of civilization in the depths of such a savage continent. It seems only fair to us in Germania, therefore, that we reap the harvest that we sued at the end of the last war. So if we skim some cream off the top, there's nothing unfair or un un wrong or wrong about it at all. It should merely be thought of as a finder's fee for setting our glorious triumph in motion. What a visit! With the South African War finally over, Führer Goring has made the decision to tour the re-established dominions of the Reich. Such a move will serve both as a reminder for the three mainland commissars that they have an ultimate loyalty to the Führer, even if that position may have changed hands, but at the same time they will make an excellent snub to those pathetic nations that were utterly embarrassed in their efforts to back South Africa. The question now is where the Führer Goring should head to. Siegfried Müller decided to Africa, will no doubt be able to regale the leader of the Reich with tales of exotic hunts and daring mercenary adventures. Schenk's shared experience in the sky with Goring will surely make for many enjoyable evenings spent in nostalgia. Hans Hütig of Ost Africa may not be much of a conversationalist or host, but he did do most to achieve the latest victory for the German people and deserves proper congratulations. As always, the final decisions up to Führer Goring, the fellow ace, who took as a hero of the Reich and deserves the honor. Müller was always a fun dinner guest. Honestly, I like all three options here. They're really good. Like, it makes sense. I want this to be a vacation for Goring. I want to go to Central Africa and have fun with Müller. I want to have a good conversation with uh, Wolfgang Schenk. But Hans Hutig did do a lot of the war effort, so... And he's probably the one that might rebel the most. So let's, let's have a meeting with him. 
Let's have a meeting with them. But a uh, total victory in its aftermath. War Nation, which is still recovering from the wounds made by the German Civil War, the great triumph of the SAF has made great influence over our people, which is even greater than our wildest expeditions even before. Every day the newspapers, TVs, and radios are filled with reports about how great our success is an interview with soldiers from the Africa Corps that just returned from the battlefield, and spontaneous celebrations can be seen in every city of the Reich. To our people. Many have remembered the old days when we conquered Paris, destroyed the Soviets, and defeated the Russian remnants. While such a victory cannot be compared with those great victories we achieved before, the first victory against the Western powers after the Civil War has still made people passionate about what we're going to achieve in the future. Retired old put on their medals and tell stories about the performances in the past. Younglings are gathering in the conscription stations wishing to win their own glory in such an unstable but exciting age. The Reich is now a sea of joy, and all doubts about our newly secured government have disappeared into the dust. However, there are still some troubling consequences coming alongside the good ones. Those militaries who didn't like us from the beginning that has gained more popularity and prestige by the victory. They openly declare that the Reich need directly take out her enemies so that we can become the ruler of the world through blood and fire. Though, for now, the situation is still under our control. We still need to keep a close eye over those detestable and ignorant beasts. Rejoice, but remember to keep calm, my friend. Ooh, greatly increase the loyalty of the militarists, but greatly increase the power. But we did get more stability and, um, and war support, so very nice. Well, technically, we already have Madagascar, and we already fished, uh, filled out the cabin here, so that's really nice. The hero returns. Spado stared out of the window of the plane. He stared and saw below in an industrial mess below with the factory stretching as far as the eye could see. He supposed this was necessary to keep the Reich's war machine running, but it was still an eyesore. Smog billowed out of the chimneys, polluting the once blue sky with a sea of gray and black. Was this really what Spado had spent his time fighting for? He was almost powerless now in his assignment to, to Africa. Shona had been able to act unopposed in his schemes of taking control of the Reich for himself. Spado didn't understand why he needed to gain this much control. He was a militarist, after all, and the militarists had won the war. It was an enigma. It it was an enigma that now is now Spado's superior. The thought of Shona as a superior made Spado want to vomit. And then there was a fat man, too. That pe petulant dude. He barely knew how to command anything, much less a Reich. Hey, he had saved the Reich in Africa. And this was his reward? Going back to two idiots who didn't know how an economy was supposed to function? A Spado just hopped on a plane to America on a foreign military mission. He could... Spado stopped himself. He had a duty to the Vaterland, after all. He couldn't desert now, not like this. The plane landed. Spado's back in the Reich. Welcome home. Greatly increase the loyalty of the militarists and decrease the influence of the militarists. Also aid... This will... Oh, this will add the Spado's triumph influencer, which decreases the influence and increases loyalty with a small amount. That is interesting. I was not expecting that. Praetorian triumph. Oh, and what do we have here? Oh! Tomsk. Good job, Tomsk. Uh, well, let's get this one first. A uh, German human. As a joke around the Reichstag for a couple days, if someone starts making a threat that they have no means to back up, they call each other a Thatcher or say they pulled at Margaret. Then they start receiving reports of troop movements to the borders of the garrison. The joke dies down, not as funny anymore. Then they receive even more. In a week, they're receiving detailed descriptions of mass military training exercises. Exercises conducted in reconstructions of Truro, Plymouth, and Bodmin Bod 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 Moor. No one's joking now. The Reich Minister feels like a fool looking at the phone on his desk. A short time ago, he'd enjoyed mocking and suddenly he thought. The woman at the other end, and now here he was, hand hanging over the phone, reluctant to pick up the handset. Turned out that London wasn't joking when they last spoken. If anything, the joke was known him. Hello? Fear and loathing in Ost Africa. The Fuhrer was trying his hardest to make conversation with the most almost uncomfortably taciturn Reichskommissar. You know, my father was a colonial governor, much like you are now, Herr Hutig. Yes, he was in charge of the imperial colony of Sudwest Africa, and much like you, he had been the burden of bringing civilization to this poor excuse for a continent. Nothing. Not even an acknowledgement that he heard Goring speak. If the man had not been responsible for the recent victory in the war, the Fuhrer would seriously consider having him removed and sent to the wallow behind a desk deep in the Wolfschans. So far, Goring thought the only thing that had made his visit even semi-bearable was exciting or excellent cognate that Hutek had provided. It was frankly astonishing to the former Rex Marshal that a man with such an unpleasantly austere personality would keep such a collection. He made a mental note to carry off as much as he could upon his return to Germania. Just as the Fuhrer was beginning to lose all hope of ever getting his companion to engage in any sort of discussion, the Ost-African Rex Commissar seemed to burst into a frenzy of animated movement and speech like a jack-in-the-box springing out. Mein Fuhrer, mein Fuhrer, it is good to finally be able to talk to you in person. Goring was about to return the compliment but who did, did, not, did not let up? We must talk about the others. I have uh, very important information regarding them. Very important information. As words came in staccato bursts like the fire from a Sturmgewehr, Goring was completely taken back. Yeah, Hotek, please, please settle down. If you have something so serious to discuss, I'm sure we can talk it over at some other time in a more official capacity. 
The words seemed to snap Hutig back to reality or so Goring thought, or believe when the man stopped his infernal shouting. As a Fuhrer handed his host a glass of cognac and began to attempt to entertain him with old war stories, he did not notice the dark, almost glassy look that had now settled on the disturbed zealot. He similarly failed to notice the twitching of the man's eyes or the curling of the man's fists. No, the master of the Reich was just as clueless as ever. Ha <laughs> ha, where to visit? Praetorian triumph. The triumph of National Socialism in the African continent calls for a grand parade the likes of which has never been seen in the untamed land. The victorious and battle-hardened Reich's commissariats and Boer forces deserve the chance in the spotlight. Their faces and arms broadcast to every household in the Reich to watch with awe and pride. Dr. Goebbels himself could not script a better propaganda victory. At the same time, this display will be motivating our people back home. It will also serve to rub the noses of the OFN dogs in their failure, destroying their citizens' faith in their weak and ineffective leaders. Hopefully it will cause enough resentment to occupy them for the time being and keep them from further interfering with their rightful sphere of influence. We do have a little bit of political part too. Look at that. Uh, I gotta get some anti here. Where to visit, though? With the South African War finally over, Führer Goring has made the decision to tour the re-established dominions of the Reich. Such a move will serve both as a reminder for the three mainland Reich's commissars that they have an ultimate loyalty to the Führer, even if that position may have changed hands. But at the same time, we'll make an excellent snub to those pathetic nations that were utterly embarrassed in the efforts to back South Africa. The question was now where Führer Goring should head. Siegfried Müller in Central Africa would no doubt be able to regale the leader um, of exotic hunts and daring mercenary adventures. Schenk's shared experience in the sky of Goring will surely make for many enjoyable evenings spent in nostalgia. I think I've already read this one. My apologies. Uh, as always, the final decision is up to the fear of Goring. Müller was always a fun dinner guest. Yes. The issue of the gears in the halls of the Reichstag had become a hubbub of activity and discussion, where once the English request for the return of Cornwall was seen as a joke. It's swiftly become clear that it is anything but. The Reich's Commissar sits with other leading members of the Reich's uh, the government and waits. They, too, speak over one another, some calling the military exercises in the region a bluff, while others arguing that even if it is, it's one that the Reich could ill afford to call. Some argue that the return of the Wehrmacht soldiers from British soil is, in fact, a win for the overextended entire military, where others argue that withdrawal compromises German diplomatic authority in Europe. The Fuhrer watches silently. The arguing goes on and on, until eventually the Fuhrer stands, the table saw, falls silent, and the Reich's minister fidgets when he's leveled a hard, long look. We can't risk another war, we have to accept the demand. The English plans as they stand cannot be accepted, but perhaps we'll accept an alternative. Who are the English to try and dictate to us? Hmm. Um, this is not good. I was not expecting a conflict like this so soon. So, let's stop training for now. And actually, I don't think these guys can actually re re replace themselves, which really sucks. Why is it? Why, is, why are they losing stuff? They shouldn't be. Cool. Um, actually, what are, what's their naval invasion ca capabilities like? Attack 30%, nice for rivers. Amphibious, 25. Jesus Christ, that's really nice. They're only 12 combo with, but that ain't too shabby, so. Uh... Actually, do we have these guys back? Oh, yes. That's good. Alright. Um, actually, let's take our technology. Actually, we can look at it here. I want to see how many guys can we invade at one time. 40. That's not bad. That's not bad. 40. That's, that's actually pretty good. We can send the entire military then, or the entire army here. I don't trust. Um... Oh, wait, are these. Oh, these guys are different. Ah. Oh. I want to convert you guys to these dudes. Uh, there you are. Cool. I want all three of you guys to launch an invasion from here. Uh, it, this is just in case. You never know what could happen. Um, I'd like to take over this area if we possibly can. I don't trust these people. Um, actually, give me all I guess. So us three. Let's go to the top three here too. I'll come from Hamburg. Attack Dover. Cut these guys off as much as possible too. Three. Yeah, this is not going to be good. I was really not expecting this. Oh, no, don't join that one. Oh, god dang it. You s ah. Whatever. Using these guys to inv naval invade is probably a really bad idea, but whatever. I don't really care. There you go. Cool. And one, two, three. Keel, you should be able to go through there. We're going to do a massive invasion here, as you can tell. Um, one, two, three. Using tanks to naval invade is a really bad idea, but we're going to do it anyways because we can. Cool. Um, Portsmouth, perhaps? You do have armor, so that will definitely help us out. Uh, and then one, two, three. That should be good enough for us to navally invade. I could be seriously wrong, which I hope I'm not, but... Hey, that's what auto-saving is for, right? Alright, just in case, and also just in case... Uh, what are we building? We're building a military factories. We're going to have two military factories on at all times. We're going to continue making some civvies as well, because we could really use a bigger industry, like, straight up. Just a bigger industry. Get over here really fast, boys and girls. My god, who is still moving their fat cabooses over here? First among equals in Africa. Praetorian Triumph. The garrison stays. You and your fat booties are taking so long. 
No wonder you guys couldn't come down to Africa at that time. A vacation in Central Africa. And this one, like Skomo Samula gestured at the stuffed head of the lion, adorning the mantelpiece of the dining hall of the Hitlerstadt retreat. Now, this one was quite a hunt. He had me on for two days before I managed to bring him off the ground off of, to Lake Victoria. Goringham started admiringly, or stared admiringly, at the trophy before letting out a slow whistle. What a mighty beast indeed, Herr Müller. It shows the mark of a true Aryan to have the skill and courage to take its life. Müller seemed disinterested in that particular compliment and began to point out the other prominent trophies hanging upon the walls, basking in the praise delivered to him by the Fuhrer as he shared his many adventures. Naturally, the victorious Rex Commissar and the still freshly anointed Fuhrer were the centerpiece of the dinner, but they were hardly alone while the two uh, bon violence or kerosene. Kerosene. General Felon von Tema took the chance to converse with his former superior, the now retired General Feldmarschall Rommel. You know von Tema offered, his voice noticeably charged with emotion. I'll never forget what you taught us in North Africa, sir, and never let my friend forget it either. The words of praise clearly affected the old warrior, Herr Toma. It means more to me than you could guess to hear that I had some value to the future soldiers of my Vaterland. It brings me some comfort in my twilight years. Herr Rommel, Herr von Toma. The loud voice of the fear earned the, uh, the, the tender moment. We should both get some sleep. Remember that we have to have a hunt with the likes come out tomorrow. And he promises it'll be an exciting time. The two battle weary men sigh but dutifully obeyed. Oh yes, Daddy. <laughs> oh, where'd that come from? Um, anyways, uh, uh, don't ask. Uh, let's see. Beat out the bush fires. Despite his total and, and utter victory, it seemed that certain nuisances have determined themselves to continue to act as a thorn in our side as long as they can. Natives, former South African military units, even though often stay behind, partisans have all but attaining or harassing our supply lines and outposts in the weeks following a triumph. We cannot allow this so to do so would do be embarrassing ourselves on the world stage. What kind of power is unable to control its own territory? If these fools wish to be dragged out kicking and screaming, then so be it. Their fear has given the Reichskommissar Hutig. Oh, something. He's given him Rex Commissar Hutig fully way to eliminate these stains in any manner he sees fit with as much of our stockpiles as he might require. I'm here. We are helping our colonies. Who to visit, though? Ah, uh, tell me of the fellow Ace. Yes, please. The Praetorian Triumph. Theo Gong has visited Praetoria for a joint military parade between the Triumph and Africa Shield and the newly formed Boer Republic. The event was reported to have been massive, blocking most of the roads of the city in an extravagant display of military strength. Fear Goring has reportedly been very impressed with the Shield's troops, commenting that they have been to train ours instead of us training them. After the parade, Goring congratulated multiple politicians from the victorious countries on the military strength, especially Ost Africa. A small number of Ost African officials present received these comments well before hurrying off. While praise was primarily directed at Ost Africa, the other nations seemed to like the Fear's comments as well, and many speculate that the colonies and the Reich may proper may grow closer soon. I think Africa's, Africa's going to be totally fine. Totally. Also, Oscar, I did make these guys 40 combat with, like, we're out of artillery and guns. Actually, no, we're actually out, just out of artillery. Um, just because if we're going to hit hard, we're out of anti-tank and artillery and anti-air, basically. Or really, anti-air equipment. Right, this is, anti -air. is it even worth making? Do you guys, in TNO, do you guys use anti-air? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, we have some more comments. There's been just so much reading here that I haven't been able to get the, all the comments. Um, so yeah, uh, like I said earlier in, in the video, uh, I hope you enjoyed the thumbnail. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go big or go home and get demonetized. I'm probably going to get demonetized because of this campaign someday, and I'm probably going to regret it, but... For now, let's enjoy each other in the Africa Reich. The ultimate culmination of our victory in South Africa is at hand. With the entire economy especially secured against future OFN incursions, we can begin the process of re reintegrating the shield into the pact. While having our African colonies back is already a great triumph, it is compounded by the addition of a new Boer allies who will be worthy inheritors of the southern tip of the Dark Continent. All this was, of course, thanks to the genius statecraft of the Fuhrer. His inspiring vision and passionate devotion to the German people has made the revitalization of the Reich a reality, even so soon after the Civil War. Yes, yes. Nostalgia in Sudwest Africa. Oh, no, no, no. Goring chuckled as Reich's Commissar Schenk described in hilarious detail the antics he had gotten himself up to as a young pilot. The Fuhrer reflected upon the fact that his host, who had been quite sullen and quite up until this point, had almost seemed to come back alive when the topic of flying was mentioned. Goring had never considered himself a clear Voyant in matter of the hot, but even he was adept enough to recognize that the man was clearly more at home amongst the clouds than in an office. Perhaps the fear thought inwardly, he could have been such a man if things had gone differently. So, I've been told you were born here in Southwest Africa under the old imperial colony. Yes, my friend, Vinhook. I see, I see. Did you know that my late father was the first colonial commissar here? I suppose we both have our connections to one another, you know, both in the lands we are tied to and the professions we have chosen. You are no doubt the right, my friend, but I must confess I believe I share nothing of your ability to lead others, much less a nation. Perhaps Goring Muse, clearly appreciating the flattery, but 
We all cannot be the fear material, can we? We all must have our part to play in the hierarchy of life, just and just as there is an apex predator in every food chain, it was simple, or simply destined to serve the gym people as their leader. Shanks said nothing to the self adulation billowing forth from his leader's mouth in a cloak of faux modesty. Uh, my fear, Shank seemed somewhat reluctant to speak. Perhaps some time soon we can discuss a possible change in my position. I must admit that I do not truly feel up to this most important of tasks any longer. Goring nodded, but his attention was fixed on the trays of food being brought in by the native servants. If a man screams and no one listens, does he still make a sound? Depends how much pain he's in, or huh, how much he's not enjoying it or enjoying it. Oh, what is it? Time to return home. You attacking the Cornwall garrison. Oh my goodness. Boys, it's time to launch an operation. Uh, that's fine. Ireland seeks you to rejoin the pact. Now that the rightful government of the German Reich has triumphed, our old allies seek to join us once again this time, however. Ireland is requested to join the pact once more as a Bundespartner. This request particularly coincides with the fact that Ireland is currently suffering a deep economic crisis. Thankfully for them, we feel generous to accept our old Gaelic partners in our sphere to maintain our control over the European continent. With Ireland back under our wings, we regained our strategic position to project our naval power on the Atlantic. Piece by piece, we are recovering from our old strength, showing the Japanese savages and the American plutocrats that the Reich is back on the game. Welcome back. And Africa Rek. Cage of students. Ooh. Oh, I should have known way earlier because I've got more political power that way. Germany's universities have been its pride for many years. Countless Nobel Prize winners came from these hallowed halls, and some of the greatest technical minds of the century have been German. Time takes its toll, however, and for the past decade, the Reich's. The Reich students have been nothing but a thorn in its side. They have turned to discredited ideologies such as democracy and even socialism. And with the outbreak of the Burger Krieg, many universities rose up as their own statelets. Hmm, for shame. Most, such as Munich and Heidelberg, were quickly put down, but those in Albert Schwerstetter frequently survived and swore their loyalty to him. While we may have removed Speer from the board, his pawns still remain. The rubble of the universities is easily picked through, dig out the students, and throw them into a cell. They'll learn the price of their hubris soon enough. What else can we do here? Re oh, we can reorganize South Africa. Nice. What is this? Okay. Whoa, this is really cool. Honestly, I, I didn't know this was actually possible. I don't think I've ever seen Goring win in, in Africa, like, get reformed. Actually, who's leading before we ch click on that? Ah, that's dog. That's dog. Okay. Rigged a What are you doing rigged a blow, son? Emergency tracing. Everyone is effing useless. I remember that one. I like that one a lot. Ah, reorganize it. Ah, oh, Reich's come out. Oh, I've never seen that flag before. So that's what we said. Kielsman's egg. Have you seen this before? I've never seen that before. What is that symbol? What? Johann von Kielsman egg. There is a fourth Reich's Commissariat in Africa. I guess they can make it five because we have Reich's Commissariat at Madagascar, even though the military shot right now. Oh, they don't have unique focus tree. Oh, that sucks. Ah, I wish they did. Actually, do they still have. Do they have cores in this stuff? They do. That's actually really awesome. I love that. Oh, thank you, devs. Thank you. But just cage the students and crack down on the bankers. Banks are inherently untrustworthy organizations. Good Christians were forbidden from usury for centuries, relegating their practice to Jews. While we may have eliminated the Semitic menace from our institutions, it seems some of the practices have rubbed off on those uh, who have... Uh, <clears throat> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, my apologies, that's lagging really hard. Um, some of their practices have rubbed off on those who have replaced them. Many of the bankers threw their lot in with the bowlmen, stealing their fate to those which did not would do well to keep their heads down while we deal with these traitors among them and learn well from their mistakes. Despite Cornwall being lost, they still give us their navy. Oh, we can't go to war them yet? What? What? That's not cool. Bro. Oh, do we get Schroeder back? That's Stauffenberg. Milch? Oh, he's back, Mr. Milkman. Halda is not bad either. Um, give me the highest attacking. Yeah, Halda. That sucks, bro. Oh, punish a traitor. Who takes you off face the bitter consequences of his actions? Wait, Gross Jamash is wrecked because. Ooh. Ah. Okay. Well, I set this up already. But, uh. What happens if we do that? But I guess we'll see that next time. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow. When uh, we're going back to Africa, and we're going to have a good old spanking Hans Hootig time. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.